Chief Executive of Patient Safety Learning, and I've got the privilege of chairing this afternoon session. Um, Rob sort of said, make some comments about this morning. Well, I thought it was fantastic, but I'm not going to bore you with my reflections on the morning, because we've got a packed session this afternoon. So pleased that there are so many of you here. Nearly everyone I spoke to this morning said, oh, I'm going after the break. I was like, oh, I'm going to be talking to no one. So, excellent. Um, now, I get to do uh, uh, chair the session, but I also get a little bit of a slot myself, tell you a little bit about patient safety learning. So, I'm going, to, I'm going to do that, and I'm trying not to hog the session. So, I've got 10 minutes. My colleagues from patient safety learning are at the front, so I'm expecting Claire to wave or cough loudly if I start getting over-enthusiastic. So, I'll do that, and then, then we can go on to the, the panel. So, hello. So, Patient Safety Learning is a, is a charity that was founded just over a year ago. So, hands up anyone who's heard of us. Ooh, 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 I'm really excited. I'd say about a third. Lovely, thank you. Um, so, we are, as the charities are, independent. We can speak truth to power, and we do that from time to time, and that's quite enjoyable. Um, uh, we are there to support system-wide change. So uh, you uh, will have heard about AVMA being a charity for patient safety and justice. Uh, we don't do so much direct face-to-face -face in supporting individual patients, but we work with uh, the whole system. So we're arguing that S system change is needed for patient safety. I'll tell you a little bit more about that. So we work with clinicians, with researchers, with policy makers, with patients, patient groups, anyone that will help improve patient safety. And 20 years of initiatives, but still too many patients suffer harm. We've heard the statistics this morning. You'll all be familiar with Hogan stuff, 150 deaths a week. Uh, we, we think we need to act, uh, uh, think and act differently about patient safety. If what we're doing is right, then those of us that were around when Organisation with a Memory came out 20 years ago, if we were just doing the same, if we wanted to carry on doing what we did 20 years ago, why are we not making the inroads we need to? So we are reflecting as a charity, what, why is harm so persistent? What is it that we need to do differently? I think differently or do differently. So we've been... Um, We've reflected on that, and we think one of the big issues is that patient safety is just a priority. So it's one priority of many, and it's not, in the way organisations and the system operates, a core, prior, a core purpose of what we do. So it's too easily trade-offable. So if you've got financial targets, you've got access targets, you've got staffing targets, you've got targets, 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 you know, safety can be compromised in those situations. We also reflect that if you look at safety critical industries, and there's lots of uh, analogies and value in looking at other industries, uh, the, the knowledge from those industries doesn't always easily translate to healthcare, so you can't just take it slavishly. But what those systems do is they have very, very clear safety standards. They have a safety framework, they have governance, they have a clear set of expectations. And we have that for things like fire safety. You'll have very clear fire safety goals, you'll have structures, you'll have governance, you'll have targets, you'll have measurement mechanisms, you'll have reporting, you'll have experienced and qualified people who baseline assess and achieve the two goals of fire safety. One, no fires. Two, if you've got a fire, put it out quickly. We don't have that framework for patient safety. And in our discussions with CQC and others, they, to be honest, are quite frustrated by that. So what we do is we, we measure and monitor safety processes. You know, CQC will come in and assess uh, whether, whether uh, fridges are the right temperatures, but they won't assess whether an organisation has has baseline assessed its culture or set goals for, for safety. And we think that's, uh, that's, a, that's one of the reasons why we don't make the progress. We need to, that we don't design safe systems, we respond to harm, and it's right that we do in order to give knowledge and redress to patients and families, but also learning, and we need to learn more effectively from better quality investigations. But we also need to learn from good practice and design uh, designs for safety. And you can see, I'm not going to take too much time, but you can see a number of those key factors. And one of the big issues is a failure to learn and act. And you can tell by the name of the organisation, Patient Safety Learning, that it's for us, it's about learning and acting on that learning. So what would a patient safe future look like? We know what 
not so good looks like, what would that be to inspire us into what was the future look like? What, are, excuse me, what action is needed and how do we design a safer healthcare system? Well, I'm not going to be able to go into the, a lot of detail. I've got presentations that can last an hour, and I'm not going to indulge myself and, and bounce all the speakers. You'll be pleased to know. So we've got... Um, a, a, it's called a Blueprint for Action. Is a, a report that we issued last year. We don't want to be an organisation just writes reports, but we have written what we describe um, as a, a summary of the last 15 to 20 years uh, evidence and insight from many other uh, many of the reports that were referred to this morning, describing what goods looks like and also what action we need to take at a system in order to deliver that. And we've identified six foundations for patient safety. I will read them out because you probably won't read the text from there, but um, um, so that you're not left empty-handed. We've got little booklets which we will put at the front on your way out and you're very welcome to take those away. And that summarises those six, what good looks like, what action is needed to be taken. And they are around shared learning, about patient engagement, <laughs> professionalising patient safety. And by that, we mean setting standards for patient safety, but making sure that all staff uh, are fully qualified and experienced in order to deliver safe care. That's whether you're a clinician, a porter, a non-exec, whatever your role is in healthcare. That we need data, better data and insight to inform our performance and performance improvement. And I mean, Matt's given a very good example of, of how that's developing around uh, sepsis and deteriorating patient. Critical issue of leadership and leadership for patient safety. What does that look like? Organisations that are doing great work in this space have those leaders, whether they are leaders at ward level, whether they are clinical leaders, whether they are executive or non-executive leaders. What does that leadership piece look like for patient safety? And underpinning it all, the right culture for safety. A culture that is open, just engages with patients, makes it safe for staff, it's psychologically staff, uh, safe for staff. So one of the two, two things I'm going to tell you about quickly, what we're doing at Patient Safety Learning. So we're kind of advocating, campaigning, influencing for some of those actions to happen. But we're taking two bits of direct action ourselves. One is designing standards for patient safety. What does that look like at an organisation level? If you, are going to, if you were going to set standards and you were going to assess yourself against those, what would that look like? And we've started... It'll end up looking a bit differently from this, but this is in the little leaflet that, uh, that we're going to hand out to you, so at, at the back of it. And I did share this as a test a few months ago with uh, various directors and non-execs and said, where do you think you are on a scale of 0 to 5? for patient safety. And they went, well, oh, probably four or five. And what we did was show them the standards that we've developed, which is against those six foundations, the foundations of leadership, culture, so forth. And we identified where, where we thought people, what the minimal was, whether we thought organisations were being very reactive about that, whether they were active, proactive, or whether they were working in a locality across as a system. And the people that said that they thought they were probably four or five looked at the um, assessed against the standards and the evidence that, that we would look against those and went, oh, my goodness, we're probably more about the one or the two. So it gives a knowledge base, and we hope it will give leaders in patient safety a, a framework to support organisations set those standards and goals so that it... Safety is not just one of many priorities, but actually it's core of, uh, of what we do in healthcare. And the last thing to, um, to mention to you is another product that we've developed. In terms of patient safety and learning about patient safety, learning what goes wrong, uh, learning what needs to be done as a consequence, what action needs to be taken, learning about good practice, who's doing fantastic stuff. I mean, there's a huge resource of, uh, of insight from this morning. How do you get hold of that? How do you find, you know, you, you can be sent emails after a conference. And, and we did some work with Carl McRae. Uh, Carl helps, uh, is a really, uh, is a researcher, influential thinker, helped uh, uh, Department of Health decide to create HSIB. And one of the things he looked at through in other industries and was how do you get knowledge around safety improvements and and he looked at something that the aviation industry does and they created something called skybury 
which I think is a rubbish name, but anyway, it's a Sky Library. You want to know anything about safety in the airline industry, you go to Skybury. And it's whether you're air traffic controller, whether you're a manufacturer, whatever you do. Um, it doesn't have an engaged community, but it, it has content. And what we've done is created Skybury, uh, or called a patient safety Wikipedia or whatever you call it. And, and this is, if you go on it, uh, and, and it's, uh, if you go on patientsafetylearning.pslhub.org, you, know, you, you can look at all the content for free. If you want to join, uh, register, please do so. Um, but that's free as well. But if you join, you're able to contribute and, and add content and engage in community discussions. And we need to know whether it's your Gmail address or work email address, we don't care. But we need to know who you are so that we can moderate and make sure that the, the really high quality standards around content and discussion are adhered to. And we've got five parts of it. Learn is a huge knowledge repository uh, of of. of, of learning around patient safety, and there'll be tons of stuff from today's conference that we'll add to it. We've only been going since October, so there's lots on there, but there's more to add. Uh, there's a news content. Uh, so this was, uh, I think I did the screenshot from this yesterday. Um, so you can, this is live as of yesterday, but if you go on now, you can see what's on. Uh, latest in communities, there's a really vibrant discussion about some uh, painful hysteroscopies that some action groups are raising concerns about that. <laughs> so we've got communities, we've got the opportunity to share. So if you want to put your personal perspectives, your lifting the lid stories, your examples of good practice, like we put with the action card in Homerton, it, you can add on there. Um, Claire, my colleagues Claire and Sam would help you put content on. So your good stuff becomes available for other people to use. We've, increased, we have, we've got no marketing budget at all, but we've got quite a lot of interest internationally, so we've got quite a lot of people already registering and asking for questions. And then we've got details of uh, conferences you can attend. So it, we've built it for people to use and make healthcare, uh, health and social care safer. It'll only do that if people join and contribute and, um, and, and give, us, uh, give us their information, have questions, suggest things that we need to put on there. And, and we invite you to join us on there. So to learn and share, uh, join a community, share your experiences. If you want to launch a campaign, uh, if that's a patient group, if that's a uh, staff group, or if it's an organization, become a topic expert and tell us what we need to put on there. Matt and Arda Kim's uh, topic expert. I think, Peter, you said you might become a topic expert. <coughs> will do now. Um, so the more people that want to engage, the better. And there's some sort of contact details there. So that's enough from me.